हेलो गाइस थैंक यू सो मच फॉर योर सपोर्ट बाय वे ऑफ योर अप्रिसिएशन बाय वे ऑफ योर लव दैट यू हैव शोन टू द लास्ट वीडियो दिस हैज एक्चुअली परसुएडेड मी टू कम अप विद दिस न्यू वीडियो एज यू कैन सी दैट टुडे वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग द लैंडमार्क जजमेंट ऑफ द ऑनरेबल सुप्रीम कोर्ट दैट इज ललिता कुमारी वर्सेज स्टेट ऑफ यूपी दिस केस पर्टिकुलरली वॉज डिसाइडेड बाई द ऑनरेबल सुप्रीम कोर्ट इन द ईयर टू थाउजेंड थर्टीन एंड सेम वॉज डिसाइडेड बाई the constitutional bench that is five judge bench we will be discussing the facts of this case in nutshell that is in brief in this particular case a minor girl was kidnapped and his father who is the complainant in this particular case has tried to lodge an fir but unfortunately as usual he failed because the concerned police officer has denied to lodge an fir thereafter they went to the superintendent of police under section 154 sub section 3 for the registration of fir he has actually made a written complaint to the superintendent of police upon the direction of the superintendent of police the fir was lodged even after lodging of the fir the police officer was reluctant in performing their duty means they have not even started the investigation no step was taken either to apprehend the accused or to recover that minor minor girl who was basically kidnapped honorable supreme court in this particular order that is 2008 order directed all the chief secretaries of states and union territory of india to give to give effect to this particular order and in case of non compliance of this order the agree person have a per se right to approach the chief judicial magistrate and the chief judicial magistrate may direct the police officer to register the fir the very moment the police officer receiving this order that is upon the receipt of this particular order he has to promptly act upon that order means he has to just upon the receipt of that order he has to register the fir and he must he is given 24 hours time to serve the copy of the fir to the complainant that is the agree person and uh, in case of non compliance of the direction of the chief judicial magistrate the contempt proceeding can also be initiated against him and in addition to that departmental proceeding shall also be initiated against that erring officer okay so in this regard only two state that is uttar pradesh and arunachal pradesh have filed the response and other states were actually not bothered even to file the response therefore the honorable supreme court gave two weeks time to them to file their response you must appreciate that there were numerous case earlier also wherein the honorable supreme court has directed to lodge an fir upon the receipt of the complaint where the complaint where the information is disclosing to be a cognizable one let us know which of the cases are those first case was ramesh kumari versus state nct of delhi another case was prakash singh badal versus state of punjab third case was state of haryana versus bhajan lal but you must note that all these decision were two judge bench decision there were another decisions also which was in conflict with this decision those decision those decision were
दैट इज पी सिराजुद्दीन वर्सेस स्टेट ऑफ मद्रास सेवी वर्सेस स्टेट ऑफ तमिलनाडु there was a conflict in both were two judgment decision there was conflict between these these decisions one was saying that in case the information disclosed to be a cognizable one it is a mandate over the police officer to lodge an fir but in another case these two cases there were numerous other cases also which has clearly stated that it is a discretion of the police officer to lodge fir or not and in appropriate cases they can conduct preliminary inquiry also so this has given rise to this particular judgment basically the 2008 order was passed by two judge bench now how to prevail this order because there was already a conflicting decision of the two judges bench therefore the matter was referred this particular matter was referred to the three judge bench thereafter the three judge bench finds that this particular issue that is registration of the fir whether it is mandatory or not it involves great public importance how it is involving great public importance the moment the crime is committed it affect the society at large it creates fear in the minds of general public therefore it involves the great public importance therefore it is that involves great public importance therefore the matter was referred to five judge bench that is constitutional bench the three judge bench is called as full bench i'm just erasing all this now the issue that was held by the honorable supreme court in this particular case that was five judge bench the constitutional bench was whether it is mandatory at ultimately whether it is mandatory or this discretionary for the to register the fir now let tell me what is the purpose of fir what is the purpose of registration of fir the purpose of registration of fir is just it sets the criminal law into motion
and it is a first step towards the excess of justice. that concerned victim would be able to access the justice only when she is able to lodge the FIR or the concerned aggrieved person is able to lodge the FIR only when she can ensure that justice would come to her or him. Now let's suppose, let's suppose we confer discretion to the police officer in cases of in case if he want to register FIR or not, it is this totally total discretion lies upon the police officer whether he wants to register FIR or not. Now that would actually lead to the arbitra arbitrary exercise of that power that may lead to arbitrary exercise of power and that will, will also amount to discrimination that will also lead to discrimination because kiski FIR lodge karni or kiski nahi karni the discretion lies to him. So that discretion may dis in per se discriminatory also. Let's suppose there is a person A, a theft in his house, a theft has been committed. In B also, in his house, theft has been committed. Let's suppose he's poor, but he is rich. A police will kya in this case mein? General, generally the is key lodge hoi gai hai yaar is ke chances na ke bara bana hai maybe is me shal is ki hoi gai hoi gai but is me me ki hoi gai nahi hoi gai koi guarantee nahi because he is poor and he is rich this is the only reason how to exercise that discretion that depends upon the police officer discretion so therefore if the police officer is conferred with the discretionary power that may amount that may lead to the exercise of the arbitrary power and the resultant effect of that discretionary power may lead to discrimination and ultimately that may amounts to infringement or violation of the basic constitutional principles also okay now give me a minute Before this honorable court, the Malamath committee report was also been presented and in, this, in that particular report, it was stated that there are numerous cases which remains to be unreported and more than 50% of FIR is registered either by way of application under section 156 subsection 3 or section 154 subsection 3. The committee stated that the solution not only lies in the fact that making the FIR to be a mandatory one. In addition to that, it must be prompt also means the moment the information is received at that very moment, the FIR should be lodged by the concerned police officer. There should not be any kind of delay. What happen in case there is a delay? There may be amounts there may that may leads to the exaggeration of facts even sometimes the police officer tries to make the cognizable offence to be a non-cognizable one and vice versa. Let's suppose there is a person A against whom the offence is committed. Let's suppose a theft has been committed at his house which is punishable under section 380 of IBC. Okay. Now he will he will take if in case there is a delay, he will take advice from his friends. His family member. In this friends or family member, there may be a lawyer also. 
हम पर्सन मी लॉयर ऑल्सो एंड ही मे गिव एन एडवाइस कि भाई थोड़ा सा थ्रेट दिखा दे इसमें मींस देयर मस्ट बी एन इमिनेंट डेंजर और इमीडिएट थ्रेट द मोमेंट ही शोज दैट देर वॉज अ इमीडिएट थ्रेट और फियर ऑफ इंजरी टू हिज बॉडी इन सच केस दिफ्ट अल्टीमेटली टर्न इन टू रॉबरी विच इज अ सीरियस ऑफेंस विच इज अनियस ऑफेंस विच इज अ ग्रेव ऑफेंस विच इज अग्रवेटेड फॉर्म ऑफ थेफ्ट नाउ इवन द पोलिस ऑफिसर ट्राइज टू मेक अ कॉग्निजेबल ऑफेंस इन टू नॉन कॉग्निजेबल वन इन ऑर्डर टू अवॉइड द लॉजिंग ऑफ द एफ आई आर एंड वाइस ऑवर ऑल्सो कैन बी डन so this is a reason as to why the malimat committee report stated that it should be prompt also now we will be discussing one by one all the contention that was raised by the learned council of the state okay the contention that was raised by the learned council of the state in this particular case the first contention that was in case the information is false can the police officer proceed with the preliminary inquiry in case the information in order to check in order to scrutinize the authenticity or the veracity of this uh, information the supreme court negated this view the supreme court basically negated this contention and held that the falsehood of the information is not a pre fir situation it can be dealt after lodging of the fir means the court held that it it is a post post fir question and can can be dealt accordingly basically in this particular case the court held that the investigation is totally a prerogative of the police officer after lodging of the fir whether he want to proceed with the investigation or not that is totally his discretion so in case he is not willing to proceed with the investigation he has to endorse the fir along with the reason as to why he is not proceeding with the investigation under section 157 subsection 1 that is called as occurrence report and the moment the magistrate upon the receiving of that occurrence report stating that ki the police officer is not willing to proceed with the investigation अपॉन सैटिस्फैक्शन की भाई पुलिस ऑफिसर क्यों नहीं कर रहा द मेजिस्ट्रेट पावर अंडर सेक्शन वन फिफ्टी नाइन कम इंस टू पिक्चर मीन्स ही कैन अंडर सेक्शन वन फिफ्टी नाइन कैन ऑर्डर द इन्वेस्टिगेशन और कैन इवन कंडक्ट प्रिलिमिनरी इंक्वायरी बाय हिमसेल्फ और इवन कैन डेप्यूट दिस अवॉर्डिनेट टू कंडक्ट द सेम सो द सुप्रीम कोर्ट इन बेसिकली इन दिस केस नेगेटेड दिस पीट the second contention that was raised by the learned council of the state was in case the registration of fi fir is made compulsory then in such case it would leads to increase in arrest also so they are saying that the fir has a direct proportion with arrest means more the fir more will be the arrest the supreme court negated this view in order to substantiate that the court has read uh, court has read section 41 of the crpc and section 154 of crpc let us read first section 41 of crpc section 41 of crpc the arrest can be made only when the information received is credible and reasonable and 
despite the fact that the FIR is made, the discretion lies to the concerned police officer whether he wants to arrest or not. That section 41 is qualified with the term may. Whereas section 154 subsection 1 is qualified with the word shall. Which, show, which shows the clear intention of the legislature that they does not want to confer any kind of discretion to the police officer, which would ultimately lead to ar that arbitrary exercise of that concerned power. So, in case the information is credible and reasonable, in addition to that, certain condition as provided under section 41 subsection B are fulfilled, means the accused was is trying to abscond or is not cooperating in the process of investigation means he is not coming when whenever he is called for the purpose of interrogation and there are certain other conditions also if they are not satisfied then the police officer can arrest but for that also he has to record the reason as to why he is arresting and he has to explain that also so, the Supreme Court in this particular case negated this view and held that arrest is not a mandatory, it is prerogative of the police officer and the police officer has to satisfy itself that in certain case, in such case the arrest is necessary, it is indispensable, then only the arrest can be made. So, the Supreme Court held that the FIR and the arrest is not, it does not have a direct proportion. In order, in order to substantiate further that section 154 subsection 1 is a mandatory provision, it imposes a clear mandate over the police officer to lodge an FIR. Let us read section 39 of the CRPC. Section 39 CRPC particularly impose a mandate upon the general public that in case they are aware about certain offence to be committed or if any person has an intention to commit an offence. In such case, they are duty bound to either inform the police officer or to inform the magistrate. And in case they do not inform, they, the penal offence would be attracted. That is, the, they would be liable under section 176 of the Indian Penal Code. means impose a clear mandate upon the general public to give information in case the offence is committed or any person has an intention to commit an offence. They are liable to inform to the either to the police officer or to the magistrate. And in case they fail, they would be liable under section 176 of Indian Penal Code. Now, let us suppose we give discretion to the police officer to lodge an FIR. Let us suppose we have given discretion. Section 154, 1 may hum discretion there, police officer, ki tu lodge kar FIR nahi kar teri marzi hai. But in case the person failed to lodge an FIR, that would be a clear violation of section 39, wherein section 39 imposing a mandate upon the public, general public to lodge an FIR. But here we are conferring a discretion to the police officer and police officer, let us suppose, has denied to lodge an FIR. Now, what would, the, what would be the consequences of this? That, the, the, that person 
would have to suffer an imprisonment under section 176. Now, if we give the such an interpretation to section 154, that actually leads to the apparent conflict between section 39 and 154 of the CRPC. And the, as per the rule of interpretation, we cannot give such an interpretation which would lead to ultimately an absurdity. And the tool of interpretation is used only where there is absurdity and in particular in order to remove that absurdity, the rule of interpretation is applied. Now, if such an interpretation is up used, that would be leads to an apparent conflict and that is not the rule of interpretation, that is going against the very rule of interpretation. So, therefore, the Supreme Court again negated this view and held that it is a mandatory. It is mandate over the police officer to lodge an FIR. No discretion has been conferred by section 154, subsection 1. As per the rule of interpretation, if the language of the section is plain in itself, as section 154 is clearly imposing a mandate and it is amply clear from the language of the section itself, ki it is imposing a mandate upon the police officer to lodge an FIR, then we cannot deviate from the literal rule of interpretation. The basic rule of interpretation is we the, the court is inclined to apply the literal rule of interpretation if the language of the section is plain and unambiguous. So, in case the court, in case the court has applied any other rule of interpretation, despite the language is plain, that would amount to encroaching into the field of legislature and same is in violation of the basic principle of the constitution that is separation of power. Therefore, the court held that the language of the section is plain itself and we cannot deviate from the literal rule of interpretation and section 154 is imposing a clear mandate upon the police officer to lodge an FIR. The Supreme Court in the last has given certain cases in which the preliminary inquiry can be done. Means it may be done or it may not be done. It is a totally a prerogative of the police officer. First, in case there is a case of medical negligence. That is decided in Jacob Matthew versus state of Punjab. The second one was corruption case. Third, in case there is a undue delay in lodging of the FIR. Fourthly, in matrimonial case. And lastly, in case the offence, the police officer ko aiso lagta hai ki ye cognizable offence nahi hua, rather it is a non-cognizable offence. So, us case mein bhi court police officer preliminary inquiry kar sakta. The time period in which the preliminary inquiry has to be completed, that is maximum 15 days. The list provided by the Honorable Supreme Court wherein the police officer can conduct the preliminary inquiry is not exhaustive in itself. It is just an illustrative. Unfortunately, with harsh reality, this judgment has not been given effect in its latter and spirit. Even today, a person has to move from pillar to post in order to get his FIR registered. 